to you from the Forge of Freedom studio in the heart of America, a podcast dedicated to preserving freedom and inspiring personal success. Freedom is born and lives through you, the individual, and it dies in the shadows of tyranny. Motivating our listeners to become well-rounded, freedom-minded people with the body of an athlete, the mind of a stoic, and the spirit of a warrior. The Tree of Liberty lives on through you, the Forge of Freedom. And now, here's your host, Alex Uli. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Forge of Freedom podcast. I'm your host, Alex Uli, and this is episode 98 of the Forge of Freedom uh, today for Monday, Gun Day, I'm coming to you with an episode that's it's audio only. So if you normally catch this uh, podcast by video, uh, you're just getting the audio uh, this week for Monday, Gun Day. But I wanted to share what I thought was a, a useful information for those of you, especially who are considering taking some firearms courses uh, in the upcoming year, some uh some vocabulary that might be useful to you uh, for that class. And it, and I found this article on nrafamily.org, and it's an article by W.H. Chip Gross. And the article is called 10 Advanced Handgun Training Terms You Should Know. You'll hear these in the classroom and on the range, so it's good to know them. And uh, I thought they were... They were useful terms, and I'll link to this article in the show notes. But I thought it was uh, useful to know, like I said, for those of you who are considering taking some classes in the near future, uh, I'm going to share these 10 with you from the article. But I'm also going to add one more. And, of course, there are many others that you should know. Uh, If you've never taken a basic class, of course, You'll learn a lot uh, in that basic class. And this says advanced, but I wouldn't call it advanced uh, personally. Uh, But these are terms that uh, that you'll need to know from basic classes all the way up through more advanced classes. And the first one that is not in this article that I think is very important is the ceasefire command. So when you take a basic pistol class, you'll learn all kinds of terminology, especially if you take a, a an NRA basic pistol courses, which is what uh, I teach, which is what uh, my, tam- my family teaches. And uh, whenever you go on the range, we always, and I'm typically the range safety officer, I'll typically go over all of the commands that you could expect me to say throughout the course of the range portion of the class. And one of the most important commands is the ceasefire command. And the ceasefire command is something that anyone on the range can call at any time, not just me as the range safety officer. And it means stop doing what you're doing immediately. So if you are up on target uh, with your firearm, you're about to take a shot, and you hear the ceasefire command, that means the finger comes off the trigger, you come off the target, and you wait for the command to either unload and show clear or uh, whatever the next command is. But you do not fire a shot, uh, because it means there's something unsafe or potentially unsafe going on. And that could be some somebody has dropped something on the, on the floor of the range and is attempting to pick it up while others are shooting, which is, of course, a very dangerous situation. Somebody's gone downrange, heaven forbid, uh, while shooting is going on, uh, or somebody has pointed a firearm in an unsafe direction and the instructors need to take corrective action and can't pay attention to the rest of the class, Uh, whatever the situation may be, ceasefire means the range is cold, do not shoot, do not finish your shot, keep the firearm pointed in a safe direction, and wait for the next command. So that's extremely important to get 
to get, uh, I think, for everybody to know at the outset. That's that's something that the range safety officer should go over before the course of fire starts uh, during the class. But these next 10, uh, like I said, that uh, are suggested in this article by Chip Gross, I think are, are useful as well. And the first one is load and make ready. And he says, aka lock and load. I've never used that terminology, but I do do use the terminology load and make ready. And that means you load, whether that's a semi-automatic handgun or a revolver, you load the firearm. That means you've loaded the magazine, you put the magazine into the handgun itself, uh, or you insert the cartridges into the cylinder of the revolver. And the firearm, you get a grip and you come out into the ready position, typically the low ready, which is at a 45 degree angle downrange uh, toward the ground. So that's load and make ready, and then you wait for the command to, to fire or whatever the next command may be, typically fire. So uh, that's load and make ready. The next one, uh, and these are related, the next two, really, sight alignment, and the third one, sight picture. So when you think about the process of aiming, these are really subcategories of aiming. Sight alignment is the relationship between the front sight and the rear sight. So on the firearm, um, whether it's a semi-automatic handgun or a revolver, it will have a front sight and a rear sight. Now there are exceptions to that. There are some very small handguns that do not have a rear sight, or it may be recessed and actually carved out in the frame, but typically it will have a front sight and a rear sight. And sight alignment is the relationship between the front sight and the rear sight. And you want, whenever you have proper sight alignment, the front sight post to be centered and even in the notch in the rear sight. So the front sight will have a single post, the rear sight will have a U shape, um, typically between two posts in the rear, and you want the front sight centered and even between that one. So uh, you want the, sometimes I'll say equal height, equal light. So you want the front sight even with the top of the rear with equal light on each side. So centered and even, equal height, equal light. That's sight alignment. Sight picture is the relationship. We're going a step further. It's the relationship between the sights and the target. So uh, you've got a good sight. You've got good sight alignment. Now you need to align your sights with the target. So if you've got a a firearm equipped with uh, sights that are adjusted for a center hold, uh, that means that if you have the front sight post on the bullseye, as long as you perform all the mechanics of a proper firing sequence and the fundamentals of marksmanship, the shot should go in the center of the target. Now, when you're talking about the rear sight, the front sight, and the target, they are at different focal planes. And you can only focus on one of those three at the same time. So if you're focused on the target, both sights will be blurry. If you're focused on the rear sight, the front sight and the target will be blurry. And if you're focused on the front sight, the rear sight and the target will be blurry. We want to focus on the one in the middle, which is the front sight. So the front sight should be in focus. The rear sight should be slightly blurry, and the target should be slightly blurry. That's considered proper sight picture. Okay. The next one, and this is the fourth term, uh, is out of battery. And out of battery, uh, you might think, if you're not familiar with firearms is got something to do with an actual electronic battery and it's not that okay and there's not a dead battery here out of battery 
means that the slide, which is the part on a semi-automatic handgun that reciprocates back and forth uh, to load a cartridge into the chamber and extract the empty case when it slides to the rear, uh, it's when it doesn't go all the way forward for whatever reason. Either somebody has not racked the slide properly when they've loaded the gun, uh, the gun is dirty so that the slide doesn't go forward with enough inertia to go into battery uh, that is completely locked forward, uh, or some other reason. Okay, but if the firearm is out of battery, so the slide is not all the way forward, the firearm won't function. Okay, so uh, we see this primarily in classes. Uh, I see it most frequently when people are hesitant when they rack the slide. So whenever you load and make ready, you insert the magazine and then you rack the slide. Well, if people pull back on the slide and then let their hand go forward with the slide without just letting it go and fly forward, that will cause oftentimes the slide to be out of battery. Okay. The next one is what's called a stovepipe. And these are both types of uh, malfunctions that you may have to address on the range. And I'll talk about what you do to address this malfunction with the next term. But number five is stovepipe. And a stovepipe is a malfunction uh, in a semi-automatic semi handgun when the spent casing becomes lodged in the upright position in the gun's ejection port. So uh, for whatever reason, the, the you, you take a shot, the slide reciprocates to the rear, the empty case normally gets thrown out, and then it, the slide goes back forward and loads a new cartridge. Well, a stovepipe happens when the case, the empty case, doesn't get thrown out completely, and so when the slide goes forward, it catches it and stops the slide from going into battery, and that's called a stovepipe. In this situation, uh, if you're in a basic class, uh, you may not be addressing malfunctions at the uh, outset. Uh, you probably won't be addressing malfunctions at the outset, but it's something you'll learn how to do. And uh, to address or clear a malfunction like a stovepipe, you will do what's called tap rack assess. Okay, so you tap the magazine because oftentimes magazine malfunctions are called caused by. Uh, magazines that are not properly inserted, and you'll rack the slide to clear whatever stoppage there may be, okay? And then you'll come back up and assess to see whether or not you need to continue firing or not. Uh, in the military, I, I, I've been through a fair amount of military training, and they'll, you'll often hear tap, rack, bang, okay? But that's in a situation where you know you're going to have to shoot. And typically in the military, you're going to be in an offensive situation, not a defensive one. So we say tap, rack, assess, because it's not automatically going to be bang. Okay. So tap the magazine, rack the slide, assess. Okay. That will clear most malfunctions, unless you have something like a double feed. Okay. And that's a separate issue and uh, you may have to actually strip the magazine so if tap rack doesn't work you may have to strip the magazine rack the slide multiple times to, to clear the stoppage to reinsert the magazine and reload all right so that's number six actually i skipped i didn't say number six number six was tap and rack okay what i said was tap rack assess number seven Reloading. Now that seems obvious, okay? But there are different types of reloading. There's what's called an emergency reload, a tactical reload, and an administrative reload. An administrative reload is a reload that happens when there is no threat. So you shoot 10 rounds, uh, you 
you take out your magazine and there's no threat, you take your time, you load the magazine back up. Okay, that's an administrative reload. There's also an emergency reload. That's where you're shooting, but there's still a threat, and so you have to reload in the moment to get back on target. So your your goal is to reload as quickly as possible and get back in the fight. Okay. And sort of an intermediate type of reload is what's called a tactical reload. So it's a situation where there may not be an immediate threat, or there is, there should not be an immediate threat if you're doing a tactical reload. But you still have some ammo in your gun, but you may think or believe that there is still a threat uh, that may be on its way, or um, even though not immediately a threat, may be one soon. So you want to top off. So even though there may be some ammunition in your magazine, you take it out, preserve it in your pocket or your magazine uh, carrier, and put a full magazine in so that you're topped off when the threat returns. Okay, so emergency, tactical, administrative. Now there's some debate uh, about whether you should do tactical reloads. There are different schools of thought on that, uh, and I think that it's worthwhile to hear people out. Uh, they're different, uh, very well-respected instructors that believe in tactical reloads and some that don't. All right, number eight, press check. There are some semi-automatic handguns, and this is for semi-automatic handguns, not revolvers, that have a loaded chamber indicator. So some, for some of those, they're little levers that pop up when there's a, a round in the chair, cartridge in the chamber. Others have a little hole that you can look down in and see whether or not there's a cartridge in the chamber. But if you don't have that, you may have a firearm where you can't see if there's a, a cartridge in the chamber or not. And in that situation, you'll want to make sure that there's actually a cartridge in the chamber by performing what's called a press check. And that's where you just barely pull back the slide to so that you can see through the ejection port whether or not there's a cartridge in the chamber. And that's a press check. And you only pull you just pull back very slightly, just enough to see, maybe a quarter of an inch. Number nine, run the gun. Okay. This is something you hear uh, you hear a fair amount in defensive firearms training. Uh, I hear it more in competition, but you do hear it in both both realms. But this is where someone is able to operate their firearm, that is to load, shoot, and unload without having to consciously think about what they're doing. Okay, they, they have become unconsciously competent at running the gun. At, operating the firearm. So when we talk about levels of competency, we talk about this in training a lot. Sometimes we'll use sports uh, as an example, but oftentimes people start out, or people do start out rather, at the unconscious incompetence level. That is, they don't even know they don't know the skill. Okay. Uh, the next level would be conscious incompetence. Okay, that means I still don't know how to perform the skill, but I know I don't know how to perform the skill. I'm consciously aware that I don't know how to perform the skill. Then there's conscious competence. That is, I can perform the skill, but I have to think about it. I have to walk through the steps in my head to do it properly. And then finally, after thousands of repetitions and lots of intentional, purposeful practice, you become unconsciously competent. It becomes what we often call second nature. Okay. Now that's Michael Jordan taking a jump shot. Okay, that's Tiger Woods making a golf swing. All right. That's in the firearms world, Rob Latham, Max Michelle putting a shot on target. Okay. When someone is running the gun 
they're performing at the unconsciously competent level. Okay. And then finally, the last one that uh, is included here in the article, unload and show clear. So at the end of a course of fire during a class, uh, the range safety officer will say, unload and show clear. And this is something you'll hear in competition. I mentioned competition earlier. You hear this in competition as well. Uh, but to do that, you remove the magazine, you lock the slide to the rear, and you use your finger, uh, the tip of your finger, and your eyes to vis physically and visually check that the firearm is empty. Okay, so you'll uh, demonstrate that the magazine well is empty by sticking the tip of your finger in the magazine well and sticking your finger through the ejection port into the chamber. Okay, so uh, physically and visually check that the firearm is empty, that it is unloaded. Okay, in competition, they'll often have you uh, strike out the gun. Okay, so uh, you unload and show clear, you take the magazine out, you rack the slide to empty, to extract anything that's left in the chamber, then you let the slide go forward, and you press the trigger to, uh, you should hear a click, okay, if uh, the firearm is empty, before you reholster. That's competition. Uh, whether or not they'll have you do that in training, probably not, uh, but they will have you certainly unload and show clear. Okay, and that's just to make sure that the firearm is empty before either reholstering or laying the firearm back on the range table or, or whatever the setup is. Now, of course, anytime you unload and show clear, anytime ever that you handle a firearm, you should keep it pointed in a safe direction. But when you're in a class, that safe direction would be downrange when you're on the range. So when you're unloading and showing clear, you will always keep the firearm pointed downrange. And with that in mind, I, since this is an NRA article that I'm talking about here, uh, I'll go ahead and mention here at the end the three rules for safe gun handling. Always keep your firearm pointed in a safe direction. Always keep your finger off the trigger until ready to shoot. And always keep the firearm unloaded until ready to use. Those are the NRA rules for safe gun handling. And those three safety rules should be, you should internalize those so that you perform those at the unconsciously competent level. And my dad and I on a previous Monday Gun Day episode talked about the rules for safe gun handling, and I'll go ahead and link to those in that episode in the show notes as well. So there you have it. Uh, those are some common terms or phrases that you'll hear in a handgun training course. Uh, I hope that you find those useful. Like I said, if, you, if you've never taken a class, you're thinking about getting some training, I think that you'll find these terms to be to be helpful to know ahead of time. And of course, if you're in the class and the instructor does not explain some term, do not hesitate to ask. That's why you're taking the class is, is to learn. And sometimes I forget to describe terminology as an instructor. Uh, I normally try to be very thorough and try to explain all of my words so that there's no question about what's going on or what my command is on the range. But do not, it's not the time to be shy. Do not hesitate to ask questions during the class. The class is about you. You're the student, and the goal is to teach you how to handle a firearm safely and effectively. All right, so that's where I'm going to leave it uh, for this Monday Gun Day episode. Uh, I hope you learned a little bit of something. Uh, Friday. I'll have an episode coming out. Uh, it's one that I've recorded with Rob Weir uh, about his book. We talked. It's a book about the debate, a debate that took place in 1921 about socialism versus capitalism. And uh, like I said, that that episode will be coming out episode 99 on Friday, and then the next Monday, Gun Day, will be episode 
100. So I hope you'll you'll stay tuned. You'll you'll look out for those episodes. And until next time, remember, you are the Forge of Freedom. Thanks for listening to this episode of Forge of Freedom. Be sure to subscribe wherever you heard this podcast so you never miss a future episode. For more information or to connect with Alex, you can go to forgeoffreedom.com or follow him on Twitter at Forge of Freedom. Until next time, remember, you are the Forge of Freedom.